In this video, we'll be looking at CFA Level 1's fixed income for the reading Understanding Fixed Income Risk and Return, and we'll see how we calculate the horizon yield of a fixed rate bond. So the horizon yield for the investor is the internal rate of return, or IRR, between the total return and the purchase price of the bond. The total return of the bond will be the sum of reinvested coupon payments plus the sell price or the redemption amount. So the horizon yield is an analyzed holding period rate of return. Expressed in a formula, the purchase price is the sum of reinvested coupon payments plus the sell price or redemption amount, and we divide it by 1 plus the horizon yield raised to the power of the holding period. So if you draw a timeline, how it looks like is the timeline, we have period 0, and we have the holding period. So at time 0, the investor would have to pay the purchase price, which we can show as a negative cash flow. So this is the negative purchase price. And at the end of the holding period, we have the sum of reinvested coupon payments and we have the sell price or the redemption amount. The horizon yield in this context is the internal rate of return which links the purchase price to the PV of the cash flows at the end of the holding period. We'll look at two scenarios to calculating horizon yield. One is the horizon yield if we were to hold the bond until maturity. In scenario two, We'll calculate the horizon yield if we were to sell the bond prior to maturity. In example 1, we have a buy and hold investor who purchased a 10-year 8% annual coupon payment bond at 88.50 per 100 of par value and holds it until maturity. The investor receives a series of 10 coupon payments of $8 for a total of $80 plus the redemption of principal $100 at maturity. In addition to collecting the coupon interest and principal, the investor has the opportunity to reinvest the cash flows at 7% per annum. Calculate the investor's horizon yield. We'll plot the cash flow on the timeline. So first, the investor will pay $88.50 to buy the bond, and subsequently, the investor will receive $8 every year for 10 years. And at the end of 10 years, the investor will receive the redemption of principal, which is $100. So now what we need to do is we need to find the horizon yield, assuming that we can reinvest the coupons at 7% per annum for each of these coupons. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this calculation into three parts. In the first part, we'll look for the future value of the reinvested coupons. In other words, we are going to find out how much are all these $8 worth in 10 years' time if we were to reinvest them at 7% up to the end of 10 years. In the second part, we are then going to find out what is the ending amount. Do we need to calculate the sale price or do we use the redemption amount? We use the redemption amount if the investor holds the bond until maturity. Then in this case, it will be 100. But if the investor sells it prior to maturity, for example, if they sell it in year 6, then we have to find out what's the price that they can sell it at in year 6. But in this case, the answer is 100. And then lastly, 3, we will calculate the horizon yield, which is the internal rate of return between the PV and the future value the redemption amount and the future value of the reinvested coupons. So let's start. We'll first focus on the coupons. So we have 10 series of $8 of coupons for 10 years. So the future value of these coupons will be based on the reinvestment rate of 7% per annum. The cash flow or the coupon received in year one of $8 can be reinvested at 7% up to the end of year 10. So that will be 9 years. So we'll take $8 times 1.07 to the power of 9. And for the coupon in year 2, we can reinvest it at 7% up to year 10 as well. So that will be 8 multiplied by 1.07. And that from 2 years to 10 years, that's 8 years. So that's the power of 8. And we continue to do it for the rest of the coupons. 
only coupon that doesn't have to be compounded is the coupon in year 10, which is already at the end of the holding period. So complete, completing all this, we'll have the coupons reinvested from year 1 to year 10, from year 2 to year 10, from year 3 to year 10, and all the way up to the 10th coupon, which is just plus 8. So if you sum everything up, that's equals to 110.5316. Now this can be a bit of work to do. So you can actually use your financial calculator to compute this. So let's see how we do it using the financial calculator. So before we start calculating, let's press second FV to clear all the inputs in the TVM function. Then the inputs that we we'll need to key in are for N, IY, PV, PMT. And then lastly, we will compute future value. So the coupons of $8 will be 8 and when we set it as PMT. And then for N, there's 10 payments of it. Okay, there's 10 series of $8. The interest rate that we can reinvest the coupons at is 7%. And then there is no initial cash flow at time 0, so that's 0 PV. And then lastly, we just press compute future value. So we get 110.5315. Eight. So we will then run it up to 5316. So when we keyed in the PMT, okay, the coupons was entered as a positive figure. So therefore, the future value will appear as a negative number, but that is just uh, the calculator's way of computing. So we'll just take the absolute value of 110.5316. Right, so what that comes up to is this. So all the cash flows has been compounded to year 10, in giving a total of 110.5316. So we now have one piece of the puzzle that we need to calculate the horizon yield. Now, next part, we have also determined that the final cash flow at the end of the holding period is the redemption amount of $100. So now we are going to calculate the horizon yield based on the formula that, we, uh, that I showed earlier. So we'll substitute all the numbers in. The purchase price is $88.50. The sum of reinvested coupon payments is 110.5316. The redemption amount is 100. So your future value will be 210.5316. We will then discount it at the horizon yield for 10 years, which is our holding period. Then we'll calculate the horizon yield. So if you work it out, it's going to be about 9.053%. Of course, for those of you who are familiar with uh, algebra, if you're comfortable with that, all right, the horizon yield is equals to the future value, which is 210.5316 over the present value, which is 88.50. Then we raise it to the power of 1 over the holding period 10 minus 1. So that's how we get 9.053%. Now we can also use the financial calculator here. So continuing from where we left off, we, again, we will clear out the screen. Okay, second FV. Our holding period here is 10. That's N. And our purchase price, 88.50, I will keep it as a negative number, okay, PV. And then our future value will be 210.5316. That's our future value. And PMT, there's no interim cash flows here, so that's zero PMT. Then we'll compute IY. So we get 9.0529%, which is 9.053%. Right, so that's our horizon yield. That is the return for the investor if he were to hold the bond until maturity and assuming that he reinvests the cash flows at 7% per annum. Now, before we look at the, the next example, we need to first understand what does, how is this number different from the internal rate of return of the cash flow. So let's compute the IRR of this bond. So I press second FV to clear out all the inputs. So now the holding period here is 10 years. And the PV is 88.50. I'll set it as a negative. And PMT, which is a coupon, is 8. And the future value or the face value is 100. We will then compute the IY, so we get 9.86%. Now, recall that IRR here, the IRR of 9.86%, is the internal rate of return of the investor if he were to hold the bond until maturity and if the coupons were reinvested at an interest rate, which is equals to the IRR. So that's the return of the investor. So keep in mind that IRR has a very strong assumption that the reinvestment rate is equals to IRR. But in real life, 
the reinvestment rate will vary. It can be lower, it can be higher than the IRR rate. So why is the horizon yield less than the IRR? Because the reinvestment rate is lower than the reinvestment rate implied by IRR, it will pull down the overall effective return. That is why horizon yield here is lower than your IRR. But if the reinvestment rate were to be, let's say, 11% instead of 7%, then the horizon yield at the end would be higher than 9.86%. You can try it out to see the effect. For the last example, here an investor purchases a 10-year at percent annual coupon payment bond at 88.50 for 100 par value and sells it after 4 years. Assume that the coupon payments are reinvested at 7% for 4 years and after 4 years when the bond is sold, the yield to maturity is 6.5%. So calculate the investor's horizon yield. This time around, the cash flows will look like this. So the investor will pay 88.50 and receive $8 of coupons for 4 years and at the end of the four years, the investor will sell the bond at a certain amount, which is unknown for now, but we'll calculate it shortly. So again, we'll follow the three-step approach where one, I will calculate the future value of the reinvested coupons. And then I will calculate the sell price at the end of year four. And three, we'll calculate the horizon yield. So let's start. So we'll calculate the future value of the reinvested coupons at t equals to 4. So all these $8 coupon can be reinvested at 7%. So I'll reinvest this $8 to the end of year 4, which is for 3 years. So that's 8 times 1.07 to power of 3, 3 years. Then same way I can calculate for the coupon in year 2, we will reinvest it at 7% for 2 years. And then the coupon in year 3 will reinvest it for 1 year. And then lastly is the coupon in year 4 itself. So if you calculate the future value of these 4 coupons, that would be equals to 35.5195. So let's verify this using the financial calculator. So this financial calculator 8 is our PMT. All right, and N is 4, since there's 4 payments there. And then IY is 7 for 7%, 7 and PV is 0, as there is no initial cash flow at the beginning. Then we compute future value, that's 35.5195. So by doing that, we will then compile all these cash flows to year 4, that's 35.5195. Now, next step, we will calculate the sell price at the end of year 4. The only information we have is that at the end of year 4, when we sell the bond, the yield to maturity is 6.5%. So the PV of a bond is based on the PV of its remaining cash flows. And for this bond, the remaining cash flows will be the coupons from year 5 to year 10, which, of course, uh, you're not going to receive it since you're going to sell it at year 4. But the PV will be based on the coupons and the redemption amount at the end of year 10. So we'll calculate the PV of these remaining cash flows. We'll take the first coupon, $8, and we'll discount it back to year 4. So we take, that will be $8 divided by 1.065 to power of 1. And for the cash flow in year 6, we'll discount it back 2 years. So that will be to power of 2. And then we'll continue to do that for year 7. We'll discount it back. So that's to power of 3. 4 and 5 and 6 years. So adding all the PVs up, you will get 107.2615. You can also use the formula, which is 8 divided by the discount rate or the yield to maturity of 0 0.065. Then multiply by 1 minus 1 over 1.065 to power of 6. There are 6 cash flows there. Then we'll plus 100, the future value, the face value, over 1.065 to the power of 6. That will give us 107.2615. We can also use the financial calculator to get this amount. So our PMT is 8. Our future value is 100. There's 6 cash flows for 6 amounts. Then the interest rate or yield to maturity is 6.5%. Then we compute PV, that's 107.2615. So we already have the estimated sell price here. Then lastly, we'll calculate the horizon yield. We'll combine the 
future value of the reinvested coupons and the sell price and then we'll link it back to the purchase price of 88.50 so substituting all the values in we can then calculate the horizon yield of 12.7 percent and take note that our horizon or our holding period here is four years because we are selling it at year four now we can also use the financial calculator here so in this scenario our purchase price pv is 88.50 i'll put negative sign pv and the holding period is four years the future value will be based on the sum of these two amounts that's 107.2615 plus 35.5195 and then we'll save it as FV okay and then we'll calculate our uh, IY which is 12.70% and it's much higher than the IR that we computed earlier which is 9.86% okay and why is it much higher because number one the sell price is actually higher than the redemption amount of 100 although the reinvested coupons is somewhat lower compared to the first example but you are selling it at a capital gain so that pushes up the horizon yield to be above the IRR so in real life we'll have to look at the reinvestment rate okay and the what is the sell price when you realize your investment to determine the horizon yield so I hope from there you have learned how to calculate the horizon yield which sometimes confuses students but it's actually a very simple calculation you just have to plot out the timeline okay find out what's the future value of the reinvested coupon payments and the sell price or the redemption amount then link it back to the purchase price that's your horizon yield if you enjoyed the video earlier click subscribe to my channel below and i'll see you in the next video